This is Otto. Every morning, Otto ate two pieces of toast with two soft boiled eggs and two small glasses of orange juice, which he followed with a trifecta of optimal dental hygiene. Mm -hmm. Otto lived alone at 66 Senna's Street, a home he loved as it was situated in the center of his leafy suburb. Every day was the same for Otto. It would begin at his favorite cafe where he'd order from the barista with the single ponytail. He didn't like her very much. Hello. Yep. Although not conventionally the outdoorsy type, little else brought him more joy than a straight and balanced line. Otto craved the simple pleasures. One of seven, Otto watched each and every one of his siblings pair up like animals bored in Noah's Ark. And, like any animals left to their own devices, they inevitably bred. He dreamt of finding love and eventually, should the forecast permit, starting an ark of his own. Otto lived every day roughly the same, and every day lived him similarly. Until today. Please. This is from yesterday. You can just take one. No, thank you. I, eat. I don't like olives. Evil olive. And there she was, perfectly symmetrical in every way, with her equally almond shaped eyes and balanced phrasing. Her voice, equal parts, treble and bass, emptied the breath from each of Otto's lungs in perfect unison. You just spoke in palindrome. Sorry, these, these are chopped here. Did I? I did. Oh, but again. Damn it, I'm mad. <laughs> now this is getting annoying. Take two. Chop chip, I promise. She's new? She's Anna. She is. For the remainder of the day, Anna wouldn't leave his thoughts. She'd invaded and occupied in one fell swoop like a flock of migrating birds soaring in formation. Not even sleep could offer respite. In the precious three minutes it took for the boring one to make his lattes, Anna and Otto would wax lyrical about their favorite film sequels. And whether TLC could still technically call themselves TLC since the passing of Left Eye, whom Otto never liked much anyway. Oh, Otto, um, I, it was the last one. <laughs> Hope you don't mind, I, I halved it. Of course I don't mind. Thank you. He looked at her like she was magic. And as the uneven swell of affection washed over him like a faulty garden sprinkler, Otto's thoughts remained half on the job and almost entirely on Anna. Oi! Why don't you just ask her out, mate? Why don't you have the balls? Nah. And the truth was, he didn't. Otto was only 10 when it happened. The doctor referred to it as a pierced scrotum and had to deliver the news to young Otto that unfortunately, from this point on, he would be rolling solo. 
Otto had kept his secret all to himself, yet his infatuation for Anna was too powerful to ignore. So whilst he couldn't grow a pair as such, he could grab the bull by its horn. take long to heal, but the impact of that night would linger a little longer. It was the night his imperfection had been exposed. The night he was knocked off his feet and swept another off hers. Otto thought she was perfect, the way she liked two pieces of toast with just the one egg. Even the way she insisted on brushing her teeth before breakfast. He adored her single ponytail and cherished the lone freckle that sat just above the corner of her mouth, like a crumb. You got something on you? It's my face. I know. <laughs> Anna made Otto's heart pound to a fierce and unpredictable rhythm. And that suited Otto just fine. 